Hi, sweeties. Never make these beginner air fryer mistakes. That's right, we're gonna get into it, but first, please subscribe to Sweet Savant, hit that thumbs up, that notification bell, and let's talk about these mistakes, these beginner mistakes that you should never make with your air fryer. Now, the first one is never buy the wrong type of air fryer. And I'm not talking about the wrong brand of air fryer, but the wrong type. Like, do you need a traditional drawer style air fryer? Do you need an air fryer slash grill? Do you need an air fryer slash toaster oven? Or do you need, oh, that's heavy, an air fryer pressure cooker combination? How do you know? Well, I have a whole video dedicated to helping you figure out which of these types of appliances is right for you? And I've tested them all, believe me. But the basics is how do you cook? How do you cook? If you just say reheating some French fries after work, you don't need a gigantic oven or grill or whatever. You might want just the standard basic drawer style air fryer like this one. This is a large one, but <laughs> you might need just a drawer style air fryer you can fit french fries in there you can fit some chicken wings in there it's straightforward heating element and fan at the top a drawer you pull out pop your stuff in shake it around once in a while and you're good to go now if you want to do some indoor grilling then you might need a combination grill and air fryer this is actually a grill a griddle and an air fryer this is the ninja foodie XL Pro Grill. It has a four quart air fryer basket. And I made some delicious butterfly barbecued chicken drumsticks in here the other night. Whoa, fantastic. I'll put a link to that recipe right up there. You're gonna love that one. But indoor grill, virtually smoke free, right in the middle of your kitchen. So if you like to grill inside, and air fry, this air fryer grill might be the one for you. Now, if you wanna replace your toaster oven with something that can also be an air fryer, then the air fryer oven, like this Crux GG air fryer toaster oven might be for you. Now, this is my personal preference. I like an air fryer toaster oven because my husband loves toast. You can eat toast at any meal and every meal. So we needed to have a toaster oven, but I didn't want to have a toaster oven and an air fryer on the counter. It's just too much clutter, takes up too much space. So air fryer, toaster oven, it's got a nice wide basket so you can fit lots of chicken wings in there, almost up to two pounds, I think, in this one. You can fit a slice of pizza, which can be difficult to fit in a regular drawer style uh, air fryer. And some of them are large enough and deep enough to be able to fit a whole frozen pizza. So if that's how you cook, then think about getting an air fryer oven. Now, if you like braised foods, if you like those like hmm, beef stews and things like that, and you want to air fry, you might want to get something like this combination, pressure cooker and air fryer. This is the Instant Pot Duo Crisp with ultimate lid, and it is a pressure cooker, air fryer. It also does sous vide, steam, and a whole bunch of that stuff. Um, so if you like, and slow cooks too, if you like to slow cook, if you like to braise, but you want it done faster, then pressure cooking is for you. So that might be the way to go. So don't buy the wrong type of air fryer. Buy the right one to fit your cooking style. Now, this for me, is a pet peeve, don't buy a small air fryer. If your air fryer is like three quarts, you're not gonna fit a whole lot of food in there. And this is something that my brother and I discussed. He is a single guy and he was the one that brought this up to me. He said, you know, I had a small air fryer and I'd love to make my breakfast in the air fryer, but I want a sausage patty, uh, English muffin, I want an egg and it just didn't fit. 
He'd have to cook his breakfast in stages and batches. Now this is taking a long time. This is not saving you any, any time, no. If you have a larger air fryer, you're gonna be able to fit all of that in, in one shot. So I would say a single person or two people, a couple might wanna go with a 5.8 or above six quart air fryer. That's gonna fit, and I like to have a square basket as well. The round baskets, it's not gonna really fit a slice of pizza. The square baskets have that surface area where you can usually <laughs> fit a slice of pizza. You can fit your sausage patty and your English muffin. So go for a larger air fryer. Don't forget to preheat your air fryer. Now, these air fryers, they do usually get hot pretty quickly, but not immediately. So if you are cooking something, your air fryer is going to need a little time to get up to 350, 400 degrees. So preheat your air fryer for a good three to five minutes, depending on the air fryer that you have. Let it get up to that cooking temperature and then put your food in. Sometimes if you put your food in and that air fryer is gonna take a long time to heat up, it's gonna throw your recipe off. And the fan is running, and it's gonna be in there for a little extra time while it heats up so your food can dry out instead of cook. And that is not what you want. So don't forget, preheat that air fryer. Make sure your food is dry. Don't forget to dry off your food before you season it, and you must season it. Dry that food off. If you don't, you're gonna cause steam. Pat them dry with a, a lint-free kitchen towel or paper towels, and then season them liberally. Put nice uh, uh, spray of oil on them, and then air fry them after it's preheated, and you're gonna get a nice crispy, oh, it's gonna be so good. Don't use canned sprays, nonstick sprays that have additives and propellants in them. Don't use those to spray your food in the air fryer. That's gonna gum things up. It can cause a sticky coating on the basket, on the drawers, and it doesn't give you the crispness that you need. What I recommend is that you get an oil sprayer, and I'll put a link to the one I use um, in the description box. Get an oil spray and fill it with your own oil. That way you know there's no additives, there's no propellants. You give it a spritz and you're good to go. That leads us to our next point. What kind of oil should you use? Well, don't use butter or olive oil when you're cooking at high temperatures in your air fryer. Butter and olive oil have very low smoke points and they can burn and smoke up your kitchen. You don't want that, sweeties, no. No smoke in the kitchen. Look for oils with a high smoke point, something that is above 400, 425 degrees. Good choices are grapeseed oil, vegetable oil, uh, refined peanut oil, canola oil, avocado oil are all good choices. So take a look for those, get your own oil sprayer, and you're good to go. This is a big one. Don't crowd the food in the air fryer. It needs a little space. We all need a little space, man. Separate them. Put a little, little air circulate around them because that convection fan is blowing hot air around, but if there's no space between your pieces of food, then it's not going to get crisp all the way around. That air needs to circulate, needs to go through that basket and get things nice and crispy. So make sure you leave a little space between the pieces of food in the air fryer. Don't forget to turn, rotate, flip, toss your food to get nice, even cooking. If you have a basket of French fries, remember, don't cook it all, don't, don't fill it all the way to the top. You see these pictures of air fryers advertised, and they always have the French fries piled all the way up to the top. No, don't do that. Make sure that you fill the basket, and they'll, each air fryer is different, and they'll give you directions. Fill it the appropriate amount, and toss that a couple of times during cooking so that whatever is in the middle can reach the top and can get crispy, get that hot air on it. Um, sometimes your air fryers 
might cook unevenly, it's hot in the corner, it's not as hot in the center, or the piece of food that you have, that filet of salmon is thick in the center and thin on the corners. It's going to cook more quickly on the edges. So you might want to turn it, rotate it so that it cooks evenly and doesn't overcook in some parts and is raw in other parts. So turn it. Check the temperature. Some air fryers come with a smart version and Ninja Foodie does a great job of that. They come with a temperature probe that you can insert into say your chicken or your um, your steak and keep track of the temperature of your food and it alerts you and when it reaches the temperature that you set it. So if you want your steak rare, you can either set it for rare or set it for 125 degrees and when it gets um, to that temperature, it'll beep and alert you and then you can go and retrieve your nice rare steak. Um, if you don't have the smart version of these um, air fryers, you can buy air temperature probes that you can, they're wireless, you insert it into the meat and it will send the temperature of the food to an app on your phone. Now, that's, I think, such a great idea because then you don't have to get up and check on the food, opening the drawer, opening the doors, opening the lids every five minutes to make sure that you don't overcook your food. Now look, you spent a lot of money on the steak, honey. Don't ruin it by overcooking. Check the temperature, keep track of it. Um, these things will say, okay, I wanna set it for uh, my roast chicken. I want it to cook to 165 degrees. So it'll send you an alert to come and get that chicken out uh, before it overcooks. It's a good idea. I'm in the market for a wireless thermometer. If you have a wireless thermometer that you love, please drop me a comment and let me know that brand, honey. Tell me which one do you love? Which one should I get? So wireless temperature probe is a good idea. Now, this is a big one. Maybe one of the most important ones. Clean your air fryer. Don't use that dirty air fryer. Grease splatters, crumbs drop, and it all burns and smokes. And again, we're at that smoky kitchen. We don't want that. So clean out your air fryer. Let it cool first because I don't want you to burn yourself. Wipe the outside down. You know, you don't want to submerge anything with the cord into the water. Wipe the outside down with a damp uh, washcloth, that damp dishcloth with a little soap. Get it nice and clean. The inside, after it's cool, you want to wipe down the inside. Sometimes the, the walls get that grease spatter and you want to clean it quickly um, before it gets cooked on. And there, some of them have dishwasher safe parts. So if they're dishwasher safe, again, follow the manufacturer's uh, directions on what you can put on inside the dishwasher and make sure those things are clean. And I find that like, with the air fryer oven, since we use it as our toaster oven and the toast crumbs fall, and sometimes it doesn't get cleaned out. They all have the little drawer where you can take it and dump the crumbs. The crumbs don't always get dumped. And then I'm going to roast the chicken. Next thing you know, What's that smell? It's burnt toast crumbs. No, clean that air fryer. Whew, I think I'm covered the, um, all the bases. If I've missed something, please leave me a comment and let me know. What uh, is a, a tip, a hint for beginner air fryer users that you think I missed? Drop that comment in the comments and Maybe we'll do a whole nother video on your tips. We'll talk about your tips in another video. So please subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell, and y'all have a delicious day.